today I'm going to introduce you to our newest addition to our uh, Corvette family. Hi, I'm Jen. This is my new toy, my 2006 XLR, which is really a Corvette underneath, and you're watching the Corvette channel. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Scott and today I'm going to introduce you to our newest addition to our uh, Corvette family. Uh, it's my wife's 2006 XLR and um, the reason that I'm bringing that into the Corvette channel is because really underneath it's a Corvette. And um, this is a 2006, we bought it with 58,000 miles on it. Um, and it is virtually brand spanking new and you can just about eat off of it. There's not a chip scratch on it anywhere except for right there on the front of the hood, right there. Um, with that being said, the only other thing that I ran into when I got the car was that there was a couple lights out of the LEDs that were out in the taillights. And um, I didn't think anything of it until I got ready to start looking for a new taillight. And uh, from what I understand from the run of these cars was 2004 to 2010, uh, they all used the same taillight, but there was only about 15,000 of these taillights or these cars ever made. And so nobody started to do these in aftermarket because of the, um, the amount of cars that they did. There wasn't that much demand. So what I'm finding out is that these taillights are extremely expensive. Uh, to get one fixed, it's about five, six hundred dollars if you can find somebody that will do it for you. And uh, to buy a used taillight, they run anywhere from about sixteen hundred all the way up to five thousand dollars. That is crazy money. Um, and I said, well, dang, I, I only paid fifteen thousand dollars for the car. Why in the heck would I want to be paying five thousand dollars for a taillight? So, uh, I did a little bit of research and found that you can buy the LED bulbs and then I also found out that you can get other Cadillac uh, taillights from other models and it just so happens that it's the SRX that I pulled it from uh, that I was able to buy one of those taillights for like $35 that has the control bar board in it and it also has all the LEDs that I was going to need. So um, I'm going to take you back to the back of the car now and I'm going to show you how to go about changing that to save you guys some money and uh, hopefully this is very helpful to you. Alright guys, when we first started to do this I was just going to change the tail light, uh, you know, change the bulbs in it and I wasn't thinking about doing this to put it on the channel but I figured this would be something that would help you. So I already started to pull this apart, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just explain a couple things here. Uh, John's going to move in over here in the corner here so I can show you. There's a couple, in order to get this taillight out, it's not really that hard, but there's a couple of these little uh, clips here that just cover these holes. Okay, so I've already removed those, and that reveals two 7 millimeter screws. Okay, and then at that point, the unit is fairly loose. And at that point, what you're going to do is you're just going to pull this rubber loose here. I'm going to get here behind this, and you can pull this rubber up and out of here like that. Okay, to get this out of the way. And then at that point, you're going to take this whole assembly, and there's there's this upper piece here. I have it loose already, but there's it's this piece here is attached to this by a couple of clips. Okay, and so when you go to take this loose you're just going to basically you're just going to pull this assembly loose this is going to kind of stretch up and out of the way you're going to be able to pull this out like this and that will get it so you can take the light assembly out okay so it comes loose like that and I'll turn this around here in a minute John I'm going to see you can see there's the clip right there I'm going to just go ahead and pull that loose like that and that brings it loose just like that the only other two things that you're having to deal with here is the, these two little snap clips is those just insert into the car so you're just kind of popping it free. At that point you've got your light. Now you want to make darn sure, like I was telling you, these things are not cheap so you want to make sure you have both hands on it and you hold on to it good. Alright, so now the next step what we're going to do, we're going to take this inside and 
Um, what we did, this one I've already pulled apart. We've already stuck it in the oven. We've already separated it, but I'm gonna show you how that's done. So we're gonna, here in a second, we're gonna take this back in the house where we can lay this down nice and flat and we're, we're in a soft area. And I'm gonna show you how we went ahead and we pulled this apart and um, we'll show you with the new lights in it. Uh, and I'll have some, some video here of what this light looked like on how, how the lights were burning and, and uh, uh, before I made the change. Um, you also, the these were all the lights that were the the tail light and um, that was causing, there's the circuit board that I'm gonna show you inside here, it has a sensor in there that knows that bulbs are out. And so what it does is it causes your, your flasher or your turn signal to hyper flash. Um, and so when any of those bulbs go out, that's what happens. So um, once we were able to replace the bulbs, then that goes away and um, so that's that's where we're at with this so we're going to go step by step on how we did it and the right temperatures to use in the oven to be able to get this nice and warm so you don't break this lens because again like i said 16 to five thousand dollars for this is not cool so anyway uh follow us on in in the house and we'll go from there all right, guys, we're in the house. Uh, wanted to get this here on a table um, so it's a little bit safe. I'm not gonna drop it on the concrete floor, um, but I wanna go over everything and what I did here to get us to that point. As you saw in the garage, how we were able to pull it out by pulling the two seven millimeter screws, undoing the two clips here and pulling it out and unplugging it. And I was talking about getting the, the replacement lights and all that type of stuff. Now. You can get, uh, there's a couple people on eBay that do it as a service. I think one charges $500, the other one charges $600. But what I did notice is that both of them say, go ahead and pay for it, and then go ahead and send your lens, your, your light in, and they'll, they'll fix it for you. However, uh, once you get to that point, they're going to open this thing up, and they're going to find out that, A, it's just some bulbs, and you're okay, you're good to go, or they're going to find out that this logic board is bad okay now I believe both of the companies don't hold me to that they both say that in the event that this board is bad it's a two hundred dollar cost for this board um, so with that said um, when I decided that I this being a very expensive lens, you know lens like I told you I wanted to learn how to make sure that I could get this open without hurting it so I decided that um, since the SRX uh, light is the same, which is this little guy right here, this has the, it, it, that's what this board is out of. The lights inside here are the exact same bulbs that's inside this one. And that board is the same board. The wire leads are a little bit different length, but you could just change those. I was able to buy this on eBay for $35, okay? Um, you can find them all day long for 60 okay so what we did is uh, John and I we put this one we use this one as the the guinea pig to figure out how to get it open and how to do it and we started out we put this one in the oven and we started out at 180 degrees and we went up and we ended up getting this one up to about 220 degrees and then we were able to pry a little bit open get a little bit open then we have to put it back in the oven and do that again over and over until we finally got it where it would separate and you can see here that it's uh it's we've got it where i've got the lens off of it and you can see the internal workings here um let's set this off to the side so we learned how to do that by using this one and so when we got to this lens we decided that we didn't want to go right up to the you know the 220 degrees and then we wanted to try it at the 180 um, if you get too hot with this, um, this section of your, uh, of your lens will start to warp and it'll deform. So you don't want to get it too hot. Um, if you use a heat gun and you get it too close to these edges, it will actually turn it kind of a black color and then it doesn't diffuse the light correctly. So you got to be really careful. So what we did is we started out and guys, these are variations, you know, depending on where you live, what altitude you're at, 
you're going to have to experiment with this a little bit with your oven. And also ovens to all variate a little bit. But with our oven, we start out at 180 degrees and then we try to start prying it a little bit. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. Um, and nothing moved. I mean, we could not get this lens to move at all. And, uh, and so we brought it up to 200 degrees and it started to work just a little bit. So we stuck it back in for, and that, we started out at 180 degrees for 10 minutes. And then we put it back in for another five minutes at the 200 degrees. And then we ended up at 210 degrees and then for an additional five minutes. And once we got to that point, we were using oven mitts. And then we went ahead and we, we got it over here, we got it out and we had it on a towel like that. And then we are taking our nylon pry tools and you've seen me use these in our videos before. Um, you can see right here, there's a little bit of an edge right in here, right in this corner. And this is the beefiest corner um, of this. And this is where I was able to just, just get a little bit. I mean, I mean just a little bit of edge in there and it finally got there to that point. And now at that point, once you get to that point, you can use your other, your other tools and you can start wiggling it a little bit at a time and you'll hear it. You'll actually hear it squeaking. And you'll hear that, that sealant that's cracking open and you'll be able to slowly get it. So we would start here and we went about here and then we just got it like that and then we stuck that back in the oven and let it heat up another three or four minutes and we pulled it back out and we were able to go here and over and over and just go all the way around and you want to go very slow and you're only going to go a few inches at a time putting it back in the oven taking it back out and this way that keeps this uh the sealant that's on here this glue pliable enough because it's just as solid as plastic when it's when it's at room temperature so um, we did that. We were able to get it completely separated. Um, overall, it took us about 30 minutes to do that, taking it in and out of the oven to be able to pry it apart. Well, once we got it to that point, you were going to want to be very, very careful because we got all of this loose, and then you're going to have this piece down here. Right here is the weakest point, okay? And you're going to want to be very careful with that. Okay, so what you have is you have, an, you have an option here. When we first decided to do this, we were thinking, oh, well, we'll just replace the bulbs that are out. Well, so we did. And what we ended up with is we had some bulbs that were brighter than the others. And so we decided, okay, you know what, we're, we're going to have to replace all the bulbs in this array. So now, now comes the time that you get to make a decision on how you're going to go about doing this. All right. One is I originally had decided to buy some uh, LED bulbs. Um, these are from, uh, from LighthouseLED.com and um, these are the 5mm red LED ultra bright super flux bulbs. Okay? And I bought 100 of these and they were about $30 uh, shipped to me. Um, but they didn't seem to light up exactly the same way it was it was similar but not quite and it didn't sit exactly the same way as I, as it was so i had my other light right here right that i had to be able to learn how to take it apart and it also had all the lights that and all these bulbs are exactly the same as the ones that are in this this array here so i went ahead and i took it apart and I was able to pull the aluminum array loose and I'm able very easily to take a small screwdriver and these are not soldered on. These are just actually kind of pinched onto these boards. And so you can get underneath there with your screwdriver and you can pop these LEDs right off this, this aluminum here, this, this tin, and then you can now solder these onto the array. So once we did that and we had all of the bulbs exactly the same, then all of the bulbs lit up exactly the same way. And you're going to see that in the video. I've got before and after video to show you the brightness and the dimness of what they were like. Okay, so, um, so anyway, this ends up serving a bunch of different purposes. One, you learn how to open this up before you damage 
your your actual light and you only have a few dollars out of pocket on this this came with more bulbs than you need to be able to replace everything okay as well as it comes with the logic board so if you got in here and you know you replace the bulbs and you still got a problem you've got the logic board that somebody would be normally charging you 200 bucks for you got this whole thing for 35 dollars so anyway now that we've got all of our lights we we took them off the board and you know we just popped them off of the screwdriver and then we soldered them back in place and what i did is i used a on uh, some of these you can actually see i took a uh a black um sharpie and i sharpied exactly around each one of those bulbs so you know exactly where they go so when you go to put it back together and you've got your your black your black cover with your holes for your LEDs that it lines up. Okay, so now we've got everything all plugged in and and so now they're working. Now let me point out one thing here. These lights only work one way. Uh, so those of you that work with LED, this is no surprise to you. Uh, those of you that have never done that before and you're, you're doing this on your own uh, for the first time, LED is polarity specific, so if you have your positive and negative reversed, it's not going to hurt the LED, it's just not going to turn on. So what you want to make darn sure is that you turn these and you make sure that they work. And you can plug this light into the car, turn your lights on, and you can hold the bulb right up to this and make sure that it works. Now what I found is, and this was kind of the thing that was kind of messed with me a little bit, is that the first few of these bulbs I decided to use was from the from uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the lighthouseled.com, and they have a you have four corners on these on these LEDs, and one of them is at kind of at a slant, and that's what they call a polarity uh, the polarity corner or or angle that you're going to use, right? And it turned out that those are opposite of the GM lights. Okay, so I was putting some in following the same corner, you know, and it and they didn't work. So I had to unsolder them and change them, and and I just I didn't like that. So I ended up, like I said, using all of the bulbs out of this out of the light itself. So real quick update, guys. In the video, I'm telling you that you can go ahead and utilize the original SRX bulbs, the GM bulbs in the in the new housing. About 10-12 days after I did this video, um, the bulbs started failing one after another. And so I ended up having to tear the whole thing apart and redo it all again and put in the regular aftermarket bulbs and they work great. So I just wanted to let you know, I'm gonna, we're gonna jump back into the video, but I don't want you to make that same mistake that I just did. So anyway, back to the video. Now, the other thing that I want to um, that I want to say is that um, if you follow the wiring pattern inside here, you can see that there's two wires that start this array. One's going this way, one's going this way. But when you get down to the bottom, and you get down to this area over here, it's not like it starts and goes all the way around and meets in the middle. It goes down and then it stops, and it goes up over here and stops. So you need to be very much aware and maybe either take a picture or make a diagram of this on where your polarity corners are so you get them right because this one might be the polarity corner might be up but the one right next to it might be down and that was that case on a lot of different ones of these so it was just a matter of plugging it in turning them and making sure because I had already pulled those off and so I had to double check it and make sure what was what but now that we've got them all in it's all ready to be put back together. The only thing that you're gonna to wanna to make sure is that you, and I haven't done that yet on this one, is I've got all the little loose, the old sealant that's in here that I still need to clean out of the tracks. And I'm gonna clean all that out, and then I'll be putting putting the light back together. And I can actually, I can put the light back together, but um, I'm gonna clean all of the tracks out. And then at that point, we'll be taking the lens once we've got everything all assembled and then we'll be able to set it down and I'm going to seal it back up with uh, the, some black adhesive sealant, the RTV sealant, just black silicone basically, and that will hold it. 
So um, I'll be putting all, I'm going to clean this, this uh, track out to get all the old glue out and then reassemble the light. I've already going to make sure that it's, that it works. And then at that point we'll, we'll seal it and then we'll let it sit overnight and then we'll go ahead and we'll put it back in the car. All right, guys, it's the next day. And what we had done is we had just gooped it, taped it up and let it sit overnight. And so what we're going to do now is we're just going to take the tape off and we're going to go over to the car and install it. All right, guys, we're back here in the garage. We've got the tape off of the, uh, off our light. Now, um, I talked to you about a couple little clips and those guys are right here. And they actually go, they actually clip this piece right here um, to right here. And this actually has, let me show you this, it actually has a couple uh, little tits right there that will actually fit into these two holes. So what you're going to do here, I didn't get to show you this part of it taking it off because it was we had already done that part of it, but you get this, you got to get it all aligned just right, and you'll feel it, it'll fit right in there. You heard that go in there, okay? Now I'm going to try to turn it here so you can see. I think John can get the camera in there. I'm going to be able to take these, these two little clips. i put one down so I don't drop it. I'm going to be able to take this little guy and we're going to push it right onto here. If I can get that to go. Okay. There we go, there's one of them. And then you got one that's right back over here in the corner. Like that. Okay, so I got them on. Okay, so now that's ready to go. So now we're gonna carefully move the light over. And this, there is a, another uh, piece of plastic here that tucks underneath the fender. And before we get, get it down to here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plug our light in. Make sure that's in there like so. And then we're just gonna go ahead and we'll get that, get it aligned, and get it in the hole here. Just like that. Get these little guys down in here before they go. Like that. Once you get it all aligned, just push it in and it snaps in place. Okay. And now you can see how that lines up. And at that point, you can go ahead and you can tuck your rubber back in. Okay, that little guy goes in like so. Like that. Okay, that's all good. And then all we have left is our, I believe this is my seven millimeter. Yep. Got our seven millimeter screw that's gonna go in right up in here. Okay. And one more. It's right down here. Okay. And we've got our two little caps. that and right there now guys that's done so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn the light on and you can see here that we've got all these lights are on here now I'm not exactly sure I'm gonna be able to fit this on the screen when I edit this I'll probably try to put a, a before and an after uh, so you'll be able to see it side by side on how this looks now versus how it did look um, but this is, uh, this is complete, everything's working, and uh, we just saved ourselves a minimum of $1,700. Um, like I said, these are very, very expensive. You'll want to be able to do this work yourself. Uh, you just have to be very patient. Uh, not, not kidding you, I know that the video is probably, this video is going to be somewhere around 30 minutes long. Uh, but John and I probably have, uh, what, five hours in this, John? 
Yeah. Sure. So, so guys, this isn't a real quick experience to do, right? Um, but uh, it's well worth that type of money. I, I just didn't want to give up that type of money to be able to just give it to somebody or buy another light. This one was in great shape, and you know, uh, I just didn't want to have to go have one that didn't wasn't going to match and all that type of stuff. So. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put all that information on the on the screen, the before and the afters, and uh, hopefully um, you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully this helps you, um, and uh, you know it just makes it so if you do own an XLR and you do have these problems, um, that you don't have to be afraid to do it. Um, just like I said, take your time. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching today. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell so you'll be alerted of our next uploads, and we'll talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching the Corvette channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe.